Oh, Mac Pro, ladies and gentlemen. It's the venerable cheese grater, and today I bought this one for $93 because I want to find out if the age of the cheese grater Mac Pro, or at least the original one, is finally over. Now, if you followed my channel for a little while, then you would know that I absolutely love these things. I have done so many Cheese Grater Mac Pro projects, but each passing year, they're getting older and older. And now with Apple Silicon, it does beg the question, is this massive behemoth still the powerhouse it once was? Now, this particular one is a four comma one, and the reason it was so cheap is I don't really know all that much about it. Now, I did see from the listing photos that the RAM installed here at the front at least is four gigs and they all look the same. So I think it's got 16 gigs of RAM and that is why I pulled the trigger because someone who's gonna upgrade their RAM probably is gonna upgrade some other components. Now, the main reason that I don't know a whole lot about this machine is because, as you might be able to see, there's no graphics card. And that is part of why I got this thing for so cheap, but I basically had to use the original sticker on the back here to determine what the specs of this machine were. Now, back here it says Mac Pro 2.66 QCX, 3X 2G, GT120, 640, SD, BT. So if we decode that, basically what this is saying is it originally shipped with the 2.66 gigahertz quad core Xeon, three two gigabyte RAM sticks, the NVIDIA GT120 graphics card, and a 640 gigabyte hard drive. And that's how you know that this machine is a 2009, that GT120 shipped with four comma one Mac Pros. Now the plan for this machine is very simple. It definitely needs a little bit of cleaning, and then I bought this RX 580 on eBay for 75 bucks. Those things are getting really cheap nowadays. I also bought these PCI cables. There's a weird PCI standard that the Mac Pro uses, so you have to buy one of these adapters for like eight bucks. And then I redeemed a good old Micro Center gift card coupon thingy and got this 256 gigabyte SSD for free, which gives us an all-in cost on this Mac Pro of well less than $200. But the question is, is it worth $200? Let's find out. So let's get started by giving this machine a makeover. It's completely caked up in dust. We gotta clear out those fans and get this machine looking good again. But before we finish that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Soundcore and their all new Motion X600 wireless spatial audio speaker. This thing is an absolute unit, let me tell you. It's got three amps, two woofers, two tweeters, and one full range audio driver, good for 50 watts. It supports LDAC codecs, uses custom developed spatial audio, and offers up to 12 hours of audio playback while also being IPX7 water resistant. Suncore has developed their own spatial audio algorithm that can decode stereo sound into three channels and uses an upward firing speaker together with stereo pairs to create depth. And you can really hear it in action. <laughs> You can use the Soundcore app to customize your EQ or select presets designed to maximize your music and create your own personal portable home audio setup. To learn more and experience the X600 for yourself, check out the links in the description below. Big thanks to Soundcore for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. All right, so let's finish cleaning this machine up. It's not just a cosmetic thing, by the way. Take a look at the fans on the interior. These things are not going to be operating at their fullest potential because they're so caked in dust. So let's get that taken care of. So this thing was pretty dusty. I suspect like with a lot of these Mac Pros nowadays, it has been sitting in storage for quite a while. So it's good to get the dust off, get it cleaned up. And this thing is actually pretty nice. It doesn't have any major dents or, or collapsed corners. Now all we have to do is assemble the machine. And fortunately, these Mac Pros make that super easy. This is the definition of a modular computer. Apple thinks 
that they made a modular computer in 2019? Well, I just installed a CPU tray without a screwdriver, so top that. Now, the same is also true for the graphics card, but first, we have to use this special adapter because for whatever reason, Apple decided it was a good idea when they built this Mac Pro to use these weird miniature PCIe connections on the logic board. Now, there's two of them, and each one is capable of delivering 75 watts of power. And what that means is when you combine that with the slot, you've got, I don't know, like 200 or so watts of power. Now an RX 580 has no problem with that, but as I did in a video four years ago, if you do wanna use a super powerful card, you have to be careful because you can use an adapter like this and it'll basically just overload the logic board and you can actually cause a lot of damage. All right, graphics card is installed. We'll just screw on this mounting bracket and lock it into place like that. Still no screwdriver, by the way. And now it's time for the SSD. I love using these free Micro Center SSDs. They're pretty fast. It's rated for 520 megabytes per second read and 430 write. That is gonna be more than enough for a machine like this at this price point. All right, job done. Screwdriver not needed. We have now built ourselves a pretty solid little Mac Pro, or at least that is depending on what CPU is in here because I still don't know what it is. Now, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is because I'm using a regular RX 580, we're not gonna have the boot screen. So you can get special graphics cards that have been flashed with Apple firmware and that will allow you to start it up and have the regular boot screen, the boot switcher if you have multiple installations and that sort of thing. Honestly, I would like to have that, but when you look at the prices on those cards, it's just not worth it. So we're gonna make do without that. And I've got macOS Catalina Patcher here by DOS Dude one We're gonna hopefully get this thing installed with Catalina. Now this particular Mac does have a hard drive in slot one, and I think that's gonna cause some issues. Okay, the display is now on, and I'm getting a flashing light. That looks like Windows. Someone may well have tried installing Windows on here. The easiest way for us to get around this is going to be to shut the machine down like that. And I think what we should do is pull this hard drive, which, hey, it's a one terabyte, that's not bad. So we're gonna pull that out. So now the only thing in here is a blank SSD, which means that we should be able to install our Catalina USB here turn the machine back on and hopefully eventually once it doesn't find any bootable media it'll go to this USB. So this might take a little bit more work than I thought because my Mac Pro has changed its mind about being a Mac. This is the Windows no bootable device screen unless I'm very much mistaken. Um, so I guess somebody had been running Windows on this machine and removed their Mac driver partition and it's looking for Windows which explains why it's not using my Catalina installer. So I have no idea what firmware is on here. I don't know if this is up to date at all. We're dealing with a complete mystery. Away with all of the installers here. Shoo, we're going straight to the source. So I took our SSD and I installed macOS High Sierra on it directly on another Mac. Now I initially installed El Capitan on here, but I was reminded by DOS Dude, who I talked to about this whole situation, that those older versions of Mac OS aren't going to support an RX 580, which is newer than El Capitan. I completely forgot about that. So, High Sierra will work on a 4.1 Mac Pro and will work with our graphics card. So now we should be able to put this in the machine and finally turn it on. All right, SSD in, hit the power switch. Will you please work now? Oh. <sighs> Finally! And here comes the exciting part. We get to figure out what CPU is in this machine. Oh, nice. We've got a six core Xeon. <laughs> 16 gigabytes of 1066 megahertz DDR3 
and an RX 584 gigabyte. And we do have all four of our memory slots populated. So this is a pretty solid machine here for less than $200. Now, because I installed this copy of High Sierra, I just went ahead and pre-loaded it with some stuff that we could use here. The first thing I wanna do is see how fast this free SSD is. Okay, 256 megabytes per second right, and about the same on the read speed. So this is a great reason why you shouldn't spend a ton of money on a SATA SSD. These old Mac Pros only have SATA 2 connections on them, so you're not gonna get the most out of a fancier SSD. Don't overspend, just buy whatever's cheap. Now the next thing I wanna do here is run Cinebench. Now this has a Xeon X5675, the fastest that you can go is 3.46 gigahertz on a six core CPU, or of course you can do 12 cores if you have the dual CPU tray. So let's go ahead and set that to run and we'll see how this machine fares in the modern world. So there you have it, 3,929 points on our 14-year-old Mac Pro system. That is very, very solid multi-core performance. But the thing you have to remember is that this is a six-core, 12-thread processor. So when you throw more cores at the problem, yes, you're gonna get that higher score, but compared to a newer quad-core Intel processor from like 2015, 16, they're probably gonna be that same exact score, but the single core on this thing is atrocious, and because it doesn't have integrated graphics, the already slow render times that you're gonna experience on those older Intel processors, well, it's even worse on this. But first things first with this Mac Pro, we gotta put our one terabyte hard drive back in, and I'm gonna patch this thing over to macOS Catalina. Now, you can put Big Sur on these machines, but I have heard a couple of stories of it not being the best experience. So I'm gonna stick with Catalina just for simplicity's sake, and then we're gonna see how well this thing performs in a video editing application, because that's what these machines were very frequently used for back in the day. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once I got macOS Catalina installed, I set this machine a lofty goal and compared it to the M2 MacBook Air. First off, in Blender, using the Classroom demo file, I ran a CPU test, which revealed the MacBook Air took 10 minutes and 9 seconds compared to 24 and a half minutes on our Mac Pro. That's not exactly unusual, and we see basically the same result on an unoptimized GPU test. It's about 10 minutes compared to 24. So next up was Final Cut Pro, six and a half minute 4K clip. And as you might expect, the M2 MacBook Air absolutely obliterates it. Whereas there are some disadvantages to Apple Silicon and Blender, all of the advantages are on Apple Silicon here. And I mean, it finishes rendering when the Mac Pro is still at under 20%. That is how much things have changed in the past 14 years. In fact, when we skip ahead, the Mac Pro finishes in just about 13 minutes. That's 10 minutes longer than our M2 MacBook Air. But look, none of this should come as a surprise. I mean, this is a 14-year-old system that I built with a free Micro Center SSD and a cheap graphics card for less than $200, and I'm comparing that to Apple's newest Apple Silicon MacBook Air. Like, yeah, obviously, this is going to lose. It's a thousand dollars less expensive than the MacBook Air. That's not really the point. The point is that for the longest time, these Mac Pros were actually faster than some of the brand new multi-thousand dollar Macs that you could buy. There was a not insignificant amount of time where you could spend eight hundred, a thousand dollars on a Mac Mini and not get close to this kind of performance at a fraction of the price. Because that thousand dollar Mac Mini I'm talking about, well, it's right here. It's a 2018 Mac Mini, and Apple just stopped selling this thing this year, in January, when they introduced the M2 Pro Mac Mini. So, this was a device that launched in 2018, and does not have any dedicated graphics, can only go up to 32 gigabytes of sodium memory, and it had a six core i7 that, honestly, performs very, very similar 
to this old Xeon. Now, obviously, there are some advantages. If you tried to run a Final Cut render, this would be faster because it's a newer architecture with Intel QuickSync, but you can't put an RX 580 in it. You had to get one of those external GPU boxes. And by the time you did that, it was over two grand. So these Mac Pros were absolutely killer for the longest time because you could pick them up for a couple hundred bucks, upgrade the CPUs yourself, put in some NVMe SSDs on a PCI card, you could put in whatever graphics card you want. They had the customization and they were more powerful and they were more affordable. But now things are starting to change just a little bit. I mean, this system here for $200, I don't think is a bad value. I mean, you do get an RX 580, you can install Boot Camp, and this thing would honestly make a half decent Windows gaming machine as well as being a half decent Mac, so you can definitely look at it that way. But it also weighs like seven tons. The power supply uses a thousand watts of power, not to mention that this thing being a 4 comma 1 doesn't come with a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth card as standard. You'd have to add that in and until you do, you're not going to have airdrop, you're not going to have Wi-Fi, you're not going to be able to use Bluetooth accessories, no continuity, no handoff. Like you are missing out on some of those Mac OS features here. So there might still be a reason why someone might want to get one of these cheese grater Mac Pros, but those reasons are diminishing fairly quickly, and that's why they're getting super duper cheap. It's definitely a little bit sad as someone who actually edited for this channel for over a year on a cheese grater Mac Pro just like this one, but they it's harder and harder to justify them every passing year. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you think that this is a good build? Would you buy something like this for a couple hundred dollars? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.